What have you been up to for the past month? I obviously have not been making videos. Sorry about that. I simply got out of the habit of making them. But I have been busy working on my new project, which I'm going to share with you starting in this video on my Grotto Paludarium. This is a 10-gallon aquarium that I flipped on in and turned into a water feature with a drip with a rock wall. I've hidden the pump, and the only thing I haven't really done yet is plant it. So let's get started showing you how I got from a bare 10-gallon tank to what you see here. So this is the 10 gallon tank that I turned on in and installed a piece of glass in the front for the scrapscape challenge that Rachel O'Leary threw out to all of us a few months ago. Now I've decided to do something with the tank. I wanna make a paludarium out of it. That's why I put the glass here in the first place. But when you take a 10 gallon tank and you turn it on end, uh, there's no way to get a cord out the back or out the sides for a pump. And I need to have a pump if I wanna have a paludarium in it. So it means I'm gonna to have to drill a hole. I'm gonna drill the hole in the back, slightly above where the water line is gonna be. The water line is only gonna be down here, so I can actually make it pretty close to the same height as where this glass is at. But I'm not gonna drill a big hole. Yes, I've got a big plug, but I'm only gonna drill a little hole, and I'm gonna show you how I can get this pump and plug through that little hole. And it's not magic. I've got the glass mark where I want the hole to go, and I'm gonna slip this piece of cardboard underneath the tank this towel is already down here. That's gonna provide some cushioning. And then that cardboard is thick enough to push right up against the glass. The biggest risk in drilling thin glass is too much flex in the glass. And because I'm drilling over here towards the side of the aquarium, not dead middle, I'm, I have a little bit of support under it. I'm not that worried about the flex. Plus, I won't put a whole lot of pressure on it. I'll just kind of let the bit do the work. I'm gonna take some plumber's putty I'm gonna create a well around that spot. Because the tank is on its back, I could just put half an inch of water in the tank and drill it that way, but I want to have as little water come through on that towel as possible. Why make a mess if you don't have to? I'm gonna fill the well with water and I'm going to start slow and work my way up and just putting barely any pressure at first. All right. Now I've got a hole. I've got to clean that out with some uh, paper or some sandpaper, but there's the piece of glass that came out of it. So the drill bit that I used was just a glass and masonry bit that you can pick up at most hardware stores. Mine was made by DeWalt. Um, it's not the greatest drill bit, and this hole is pretty rough. But you know, it's not really going to be here to hold water or to have to be a silicon or hold a bulkhead. All it's really going to do is hold that cord. Plus, I've got this grommet, with it's got a pretty wide edge to it, and that will slip right through anyway. And I'll be able to, I have a way I can tighten that down. I'll actually put it through from the other side. Like this. Like this, there we go. And then there's a way that you can actually wind wire around this and you can pull it tight. So you could almost use this as like a little bulkhead. But the cord will slip right through there.
There really is no magic to getting the wire from the CJ micro pump through the hole. This is a basic AC pump with two wires. I can cut the wire now to be able to install it in the tank, but I will not splice the wire back together until I am ready to turn it on. That way I am not dealing with a lot of electrical cord while I am working on the grotto. I am going to go ahead and position the pump inside the tank. That way I can account for it as I'm doing the rest of the layout for the hardscape. I have not made a drip system like this before. I watched a lot of videos on how to do it, but most of those were pumping water up to a waterfall or to a drip that soaks a fibrous wall full of plants. What I want is for this to look more like water dripping from the roof of a cave. So I decided to pump the water up to a loop of hose that will be held up against the top of the tank. Vinyl hose straight off of a reel is a pita to work with, so I'm using a heat gun to retrain the plastic to lay straight. Once I have the straight length of hose I need, I run it up to a nylon tee. Then I make a loop of hose roughly the size I need from the open ends of the fitting. For laying everything out and holding the parts in place, I am using hot glue, but that will not be strong enough by itself for this build. The weight of the rock wall is the most challenging factor to plan for. I want to use lots of small to medium pieces so it looks more natural, but that means they will need to be supported. The best support for rock is rock so my plan is to set all the pieces so they are touching and holding each other up and use great stuff expanding foam as the mortar that holds those rock pieces together but great stuff does not stick to glass as strongly as I need it to so I'm going to build a skeleton of plastic grating attached to the glass that will provide just enough extra adhesion to keep the wall from falling in any place that I want to have spray foam under rock is getting plastic grating. I'm not using silicone for this part of the build because I do not think that I will need that much strength and with hot glue I can pull everything out and try again more easily than I can with silicone. Case in point, what you are watching is actually the third attempt at a layout that I like. I also need to be able to access the pump to clean it or change it out if it fails. I'm going to leave the corner of the wall in front of the pump open and cover it with a false wall that will blend in with the rock around it. That is the plan anyway. What that means however is that the rock immediately above where the pump chamber is is not going to be supported by rock beneath it. So that plastic grating that is above the pump is going to become completely encased in spray foam. From the corner all the way to the front of that plastic grate will be one solid block of foam. But even that solid block of foam is going to need some extra support to keep it from falling in on itself. Another key component of the hardscape and the structural support is this solid piece of African root wood. It fits tightly from the top back corner to the bottom of the tank. I will tack it into position with hot glue. But when the spray foam is applied, this wood will become something like a buttress that will keep the top corner of that wall from falling inward. The last piece of structural support that I want is for an overhang that will hide the drip pipe on the roof of the cave and prevent water from spraying forward. That overhang is also necessary to give the grotto the feeling of being an enclosed cave. The first try with a big piece of plastic grating would look way too bulky, especially after it's embedded in spray foam. My second attempt was to use some plastic boards so that I could get a shallower angle to the overhang and make it a curved shape instead of a flat wall. This had some real promise, but as you will see later in this video series, it did not work out either. I'm also gluing some cocoa fiber mat in places on the glass where I'm not putting a lot of rock. This will be a better surface for planting than foam will be. I'm not worried about how ugly it all looks through the glass because I will eventually black out the sides with contact film. Any place that is going to get spray foam is going to get the plastic grating skeleton. 
here I'm putting it in this gap in the wood, which I really don't want to be there. I don't want to see through at that point. Plus, adding spray foam here will give me a nice place to plant some plants. At this point, all the structural support is in place. The next step is to position all the stones and then lock it into place with spray foam. That is what I will do in the next episode of this series on the Grotto Paludarium.